I'd like to begin this time with you today by sharing some fun facts about hair. Did you know that hair is made from keratin, the same material as toe and fingernails? That's why it doesn't hurt when you cut them. That our head contains between 100,000 and 150,000 strands and that every day we lose 100 to 150 strands. In a year, the average hair grows six inches. Every hair follicle in your body is formed by the time you have been in your mother's womb for five months and are just the size of a banana. Hair is able to absorb oil from water. That's why it is often used in ocean oil spillages. Anything that you eat and goes into your bloodstream can be shown up in your hair be it drugs, minerals or alcohol. The only thing that cannot be defined by a strand of your hair is whether you're male or female. I'd like to share a story with you now that's found in Luke about a lady who used her hair to worship God. Now, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. When the woman who lived in that town heard that Jesus was visiting, she bought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and she began to dry them with her hair. Then she kissed them and poured perfume on them. Sometime later, Jesus addressed the man of the house and said, Simon, do you see this woman? Do you see? I came into your house. You didn't give me any water for my feet. She's wet my, her fit, my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You didn't give me a kiss. But this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't put oil on my head, but she has poured, poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven for she has loved much. But he has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This lady had spent all her earthly wealth on a bottle of perfume. She was greatly criticised for this, but I believe she didn't take any notice of the criticism spoken against her. Her actions echoed the words of Jim Elliot decades later when he said, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep in order to gain what he cannot lose. I believe this woman's actions were prophetic and prompted by the Holy Spirit. Little did anyone know that Jesus was about to die. And due to the timing of his death, no one had the chance to anoint his body. The women who followed Jesus from place to place did prepare oils and spices after his death. But by the time they were ready, the Sabbath started. And when they took them to the tomb early on the first day of the week, Jesus had already risen. The woman in Luke's Gospel used her tears to wash Jesus' feet and her hair to dry them. What an intimate act. Those around might have felt embarrassed this lady didn't care. Why? Because as Luke 47 says, her many sins have been forgiven and as a result she loved much. She demonstrates the truth of the Lord's Prayer that by forgiving others we in turn get totally, fully, no strings attached, forgiven by God. Looking around during this time of lockdown, you may think you have little to give. The truth is Jesus desires us to give of ourselves. He wants nothing less than our utter love, worship and devotion. There will be as many expressions of that as there are believers. Some will raise their hands. Some will kneel. Some will stand. Some will lie. Some will sing and dance. Others will weep and cry and laugh. 
Let us worship God in spirit and in truth in a way that best pleases him.